Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. Here is another com uh, variation on a composition that I've been working on in this series of videos called Mood and Media. Now, we've just been working with the same media so far in all of these first you know, scenes that I've been doing, but this one right here, I've taken the stamp and tweaked it a little bit in terms of my usage of it. Okay, this scene represents kind of a lakeside cove. That's the name of it, Lakeside Cove Large. But in this one right here, I show you how to just not color in um, these sh uh, reflective areas of the uh, design. And I just kind of wiped it off with a dry paper towel, or you can just not color them up, you know, too much. And just stamp it out here. And the thing that would change this from kind of a more mirrored type of quality, you know, like something like these ones right here into a meadow, is just, you know, for, for one, doing that, but changing the hue from, you know, sky to ground. And this one I just did, you know, blue sky, green grass down here, but there's nothing to be said that, yeah, that you know, you can't do green down here and have this as a sunset up here or something like that, or this, maybe this is all dried, you know, it's California and it's just, you know, brown in here or something like that. But, you know, changing that color scheme, you know, altering it from one uh, area to the next would, you know, change it from kind of more of this um, reflective type of surface here to something of its own, I don't know, uh, nature, no pun intended. All right, but on this one right here, the techniques are all the same. It's dye-based inks on glossy cardstock, and if you choose to stamp along with me, one of the things that I think is really effective is to keep an area down here a little bit lighter. It doesn't have to be the white of the page, but don't come into this area right here with your darker tones, and leave a little bit of, you know, areas on your rocks, on, you know, a couple of them. It doesn't have to be, you know, so specific, but see these little areas of light in here? kind of makes for a more varied surface, so don't think about this whole area in terms of there's something you have to color in completely. If you do that, it makes it look a little bit more flat, you know what I mean? So that's the same thing up in the sky. So lighter colors get a pretty good coverage in here, you know, all over the place. You know, maybe a little bit of the white with the paper showing, but then when you move up into your darker tones, kind of keep those, you know, kind of a little bit more uh, on the perimeters here, and then especially with the darkest of tones, just kind of keep it in your shadow areas and on the uh, corners of your card, and you'll get this nice vignette, and it'll seem like, from a compositional standpoint, everything is kind of nicely contained. It's kind of like this little stage here. All right? So anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's see if we can't go for a little bit of variation here using these stamps. This is the Lakeside Cove Large. Okay. And what I'm doing is I'm wiping off the areas of the stamp that would represent reflections, which are these kind of uh, shadowy looking uh, kind of uh, spikes, downward facing little spikes to represent the uh, you know, reflections of those vertical trees above the rocks, okay? So, I mean, one way I could do it is I just don't have to ink up those, uh, you know, those uh, trees to begin with those reflections down there, but sometimes if they kind of stamp out a little bit, they'll represent kind of shadows, you know, as opposed to uh, kind of a more mirrored-like um, effect of uh, trees over the water. Okay. Oh yeah, I was going to add a little bit of green into that uh, impression so well. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so it's missing a lot of the uh, those little areas down below, which is what I want. Okay, I now I've pre-inked this with the black ink, but I'm going to add a little bit of the green into it just to see if I can get kind of a blackish green uh, hue and in, uh, in the impressions uh, inherently. I'll add uh, some green later too, but <clears throat> excuse me. Now this rocks and reed stamp doesn't really have so much of a reflective type of quality to it, so I don't really need to wipe off too much of that. If any, really, I don't know, I just did it. Okay, overlapping that first impression down there. 
Now, if this is the first video you've ever seen from uh, me, I've been working on a series of uh, compositions here and cards doing variations on a compositional theme, okay? Now, each one of these represents, you know, kind of trees and rocks uh, in a lakeside type of setting, okay? But on this one, we're just going to remove those reflections in this area down here. And this is just going to be um, kind of a grassy meadow. All right, now let's see what a little bit of a ink did on those trees. It just kind of gives it that black and green um, kind of variation there, which is kind of nice to have that inherently in your impression, okay? Now I'll add in my additional foreground elements a little bit later. Now one of the things that I would be doing here to really make this seem a little bit more of a grassy meadow type of thing is I would be adding in something like the sedge filler or grass texture stamps, which, you know, I have a few of, you know, in different um, dimensions. I have large grass texture and kind of the sedge filler, which is a good filler stamp. Um, but just keeping right now in the spirit of only using the uh, the imagery that um, that I've been using in these first compositions here. Um, I won't add any of that texture in. I'm going to be adding in some additional um, stamps and embellishments and things of that sort um, later after I do all these uh, different types of variations right now, but um, we'll just kind of represent a little bit of grass down here with color, okay? This is my color box stylus tool. I should have cleaned this off before I started the video, but I was anxious to get started, and I didn't do that. So anyway, there's going to be a little bit of blue in my stylus tool here. Actually, there's quite a bit. Let me take out a little bit more. I was going to say that didn't really matter because blue is a component of green, so it doesn't matter if it looks green down there inherently. Because when I go over that blue with green, it'll just look green, all right? Okay, now we have our area of sky up there, and then I have um, the area of green grass down below. But I can use a common um, foundation color in the form of a light blue. Actually, I can run light blue, medium blue, dark blue up top, and I can run light blue, medium blue, and dark blue down here, and just go over this area with green, and it'll look green. It won't look blue anymore. Okay, so, but we'll do that with this first color here. I'll just kind of start dabbing some of this in to my sky. I like to have a little bit of variation in my sky to represent, you know, some clouds or something like that, some little bit of vapor. I'm picking up a little bit of this, um, um, ink off of my impressions here because I didn't allow them to dry at all, okay, but um, oh well, you know, that will be fine. I mean, it's not sopping wet, it's not just, you know, streaking uh, the black imagery all over the place. Now I'm kind of dabbing too right now instead of streaking it like I normally do just to prevent, um, you know, <laughs> too much of a streak if I do run across um, an area that is really juicy still, as far as the black impressions, okay? It's a little bit more juicy over here for some reason. Maybe it's because uh, there was a lot of ink on that um, in my Marvy pen here. These are dye-based inks, by the way. I'm using a Memento. Really great colors, really great pads. Okay, going into this grassy meadow here, I'm adding this down. And I'm also adding it over the rocks, okay? Maybe in the end, the rocks will take on kind of a grayish color scheme. Maybe I'll put a little bit of uh, moss on them or something like that. Sorry. But I'm leaving some of those rocks just light, okay? To make it look like they're, some of them are reflecting light, okay? That's better than just coloring them in completely, you know? You want to make things look a little bit more modeled and varied, you know, depending on the shape it is. So, um, you can see my piece of paper here, you know, it's a little bit darker on the edge, right? You, know, you can't really see it like that in shadow, but this is white, but of course the whole thing's white, so horizontal things like this 
meadow here probably might be catching a little bit more light or the top edges of the uh, rocks you know are catching a little bit more light than the sides okay this is my quick thing right here I have the studio lighting in here let me see if I can get it kind of shadowed but see it's lighter up here and you know darker on the edge so that's you know, just the general concept you don't have to get too particular about it saying, wait a minute, there's this rock here, is that, you know, would that be a light or is it dark, you know what I mean? Just leave some things dark and some things lighter, you know. Just vary it a little bit and that tends to look a little bit better than just coloring it all in, you know, it tends to flatten it out if everything has a kind of a universal kind of shading scheme to them. Okay, yeah, alrighty. That's my first color there. It's very subtle. This is the Memento Summer Sky. It's very light blue. All right, let's go on to a medium blue, which is this Bahama blue. Do the same type of thing. Kind of add it around, vary it a little bit, kind of you know, spread it out a little bit. This is a glossy cardstock that I'm applying this to. I'm using a very light touch as well. You know, I'm just using that touch in repetition, okay? Coming in from this side, see that kind of nice horizon glow that's working there? It's because I don't cover that area up with tone, or too much tone at least. Maybe something like that. And I'll do the same thing down here in the water. Well, actually it's not the water. It looks watery right now because it's blue, but I'll show you what happens when it goes to the green. Okay, adding it down, adding a little bit on the rocks, I guess. Kind of streaking this across like this. This is kind of coming about, you know, in a fairly expeditious manner. Adding some on the rocks. Actually, some actual gray might be good too. Don't do that. Okay, <clears throat> that's that one. Danube blue. Let's just add this one up in the sky. It's so just a little bit darker, see? It's not too much darker. Let's do for a, a kind of a vignette type of effect. The outside edge like that. Bring it around. Let's add a little bit into the shadows here along the water's edge where the shadows would be, you know, because there's trees there. Sure looks like water, right? Okay, I'll show you what happens here. Okay, um, let me take a little of this off because I'm going on with a lighter green. And we'll use kind of a, if you've been watching any of these videos, I did this um, kind of Aurora Borealis Northern Lights type of thing. Going for that green kind of kind of curtained style of uh, northern lights. We'll use the same type of color scheme right here. I'll go for the uh, mementos. Let's try the pear tart bamboo bamboo leaves and the cottage ivy. I have a, do I have a distress here too? Of course, it's all completely on the bottom of the stack. Of course. <clears throat> This one's a peeled paint. Distressings are very popular. Uh, it's a very popular line, so why don't I use that one? Because some of you might have that. Okay, let's go ahead with the peeled paint and start turning that blue kind of uh, surface to green, okay? And if you want to retain some of that light down here, then don't tone it all out or don't bring too much into it. But look at that. Isn't that fun? Change the spirit of it, didn't it? It's, it's really warm down there. It still looks, you know, kind of aqua-y, bluish, you know, and like water. It doesn't really look like grass at this time. It looks more like an algae-filled kind of a lake, you know, which isn't really too scenic, you know, and 
They're nice in terms of a scenic quality, but, but it is kind of glowing now with a little bit of warmth. But we'll build that up. Okay, let's try the uh, pear tart. Pear tart might be real similar to this peeled paint, I'm not sure. Let's check it out. Maybe it's a little bit more yellowy. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit more yellowy. I'm not really changing my stylus tool, you know, when I change colors, so the color from before is going to influence uh, what we're applying, which is good because it creates a nice transition color, you know, between it. Bamboo leaves, kind of a olive looking green. I might, I might change my mind that it really does need some uh, texture down there, I think, in terms of uh, grass texture. Uh, maybe I'll just add it in on this video. I was going to add it in later, but uh, it would look really so much better with that um, sedge filler texturing in there. darker green, kind of sticking that darker green in the shadow areas, okay. This kind of creates a little bit of a vignette, doing it in the two corners like that, and then applying a little bit, kind of like this, you know, in a very narrow part of the, uh, you know, just using the edge of the uh, applicator here. Good. I want it a little bit darker here. Let's do this. Let's go to back to the black. Okay. And add kind of a stronger shadow. I like finishing off my toning, at least in some areas of the scene, with the same color that I stamped out my imagery in, or whatever the darkest color in the scene is. I like to finish it off with that same color. It's often black. But not all the time. Most of the time, I would say, though. It's really not applying very much of it because the page is really getting quite damp, so it's trying to apply wet ink into wet ink. and It's not resisting it, but it's just not absorbing it. You know, It's not transferring over the page very quickly, which can be good because it makes it kind of easier to blend in, you know. It's like I'm applying kind of wet ink into a damp surface so it really spreads and blends very beautifully and very easily but sometimes you want it to go a little bit faster you know what I mean you're kind of out of luck it wants to apply very slowly methodically you know but see adding this kind of darker tone down here and I'm putting a little bit on those rocks as well not all over the rocks but kind of on the base of the rocks okay gives those objects a little bit more mass. It seems like it's sitting in the scene a little bit more when you do that. When you add shadows to something, you're saying that it's, you know, affecting the light in the scene, right? Because it's uh, casting its shadow. You're saying that the object has volumes and, you know, it's just kind of overall visual weight, which is uh, really nice. Okay, so there you have it. See that kind of darker, you know, area. You can do the same thing too. The sky up here looks a little bit, I don't know, kind of incomplete. Let's go to, uh, let's go back to that Danube blue. Did I add that in there before? I think I did, but I have a little bit of black in here now too, so. Let's go for the mm, kind of left and right top corners, okay? And that'll cap off the uh, the tops a little bit better in terms of compositionally. You don't want it so bottom heavy down here in terms of the uh, compositions. Okay, see so that little kind of left and right corner. And the, the page is still a little bit damp. I mean, I haven't been working in the sky for the last, what, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. But it's applied nice and gradually. See, I'm kind of working it. I'm just dabbing it around. I'm not doing an isolated temp like that, which is going to leave me with a bunch of uh, oval shapes everywhere in this case, you know, with the applicator that I'm using. 
So I'm just really condensing the taps, okay, and really kind of filling an area, and it's just going over very gradually. Alright, there we have it. Okay, now let me pause this video. I'm going to get some grass texture and we'll make this seem a little bit more grassy, but it looks like grass on in terms of color. Alright, let's get a little texture and finish this card off. Okay, there's a couple different sizes of grass textures. This is called grass texture, this one's called sedge filler. All right, let's see, what color should we do this in? We can do it in multiple tones, but I think I'm going to go for a couple green tones, maybe. Let's go for, I usually go darker in the foreground and lighter in the background, but let's try to, let's see if this Cottage Ivy Memento shows up at all. It's a little bit dark down here, so I'm not sure if it's going to show up. And even if it does show up right now, I'm not sure if it'll show up, you know, when it dries. Sometimes it goes on a little bit um, darker than when it dries. It kind of looks a little bit lighter. That eh, looks okay. Because I have my darker areas on the side here. I can go for a darker green over there. See that texture down here? Okay. And let's do the same thing. Uh, let's try the bamboo leaves right here. This is with the sedge filler. Let's see what color it looks like. Okay. Uh, it's not bad. It's a little bit light though. Let's go back over to the cottage ivy. Which looks like it'll be a better choice for us here. Okay. Okay, you see that texturing in there? A little bit more grass-like, right? All right, now let's finish this off in terms of um, imagery goes. Here's my reeds. Okay. One thing that's going through my head right now is I'm wondering if I should stamp this in kind of a dark green and black. Or should I just go for black? Let's just go for black. Sometimes you do, if you do it in multiple tones, it can look like a, you know some nice... You can kind of create depth. Here it is right here, in both green and black. You know, So when you kind of look at it from a distance, it creates a little bit of depth there in the foreground. But let's just go for black right here. Uh, I'm thinking it's pretty busy in here with um, all that texturing anyway. This is the reeds large. Okay, let's give it this scene some depth. You could tell me if it looks like a deeper space, you know, with this in here, okay? What do you think? It kind of puts us as a viewer of the scene. A little bit more kind of integrated with the uh, the surroundings or the, uh, the setting, I guess you could say you're putting something right next to the viewer or you know it's something a few feet away from them okay now with each impression I'm kind of changing the angle a little bit like that you know maybe I'll go in like this I'll go in like this what I'm doing right here is I'm kind of creating these this foreground in here but it also kind of creates a little bit of visual lead-in. I like to leave a little bit of space, you know, when I'm stamping foreground imagery in the scene, you know, to allow the viewer to enter the scene. As, you know what I mean? As if they were there or something like that. All right, now one of the things that I like to do, too, at times, not all the time, but just a lot of the times, if, if I have that foreground imagery like that, I do like to have some kind of overhang, you know, as if... You know, there's, uh, you know, we're standing underneath a tree looking into the scene or something like that. It's one of those kind of um, things that uh, landscape stampers often do. If they're taking a picture of a majestic mountain or something like that, they'll often position themselves in the camera so that there's something in the foreground, you know, or they'll go underneath a tree and have, you know, you know, that uh, overhanging limb, kind of hanging, you know, hovering above uh, whatever, you know, is out there in the distance. 
All right, the, the scene's a little bit wet now, so I'm kind of allowing this um, ink to transfer a little bit more. This really is a perfect setting to stamp something in there, a horse or a deer or something like that. It's kind of like we've created kind of this nice staging here, but we're missing kind of an actor at this point, which I'll, I'll, I'll do later. I'll add uh, those types of things in later. All right, so there we have it. Some nice variation. Do we miss our lakeside setting? No, not really, but we've certainly expanded its, I don't know, its potential, I guess, by how we use it. So any type of lake type of thing, I've kind of designed it where, you know, it's um, a little bit more universal in terms of its application than what it depicts um, kind of inherently in its entirety, right? I mean, I could use those trees, you know, as background trees as well. I could stamp them lighter. You can just use the rocks too. I haven't really seen someone where, I don't think where they've just stamped the rocks, but I could dig those rocks out of there. I could do it with the reflections down here. I could stamp a cabin back of this where there's no trees here. You know what I mean? That would be kind of nice. Or just any kind of object in here. We can kind of do it sans trees and, uh, you know, you can do all kinds of things. So it's kind of, you know, when you get stamps, scenic stamps, you kind of have to look at them and um, kind of assess them for um, different types of potential. You know, this could be a, a bush coming in from the bottom tier too, you know. I don't know if I'd do this, 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 and this. It might be a little bit much, but, you know, this could just be a little, you know, um, some kind of bush or something like this down below. And, you know, certainly dissecting this. I just, I didn't use this in, in its entirety. You know, I just use, you know, small sections of it for, for what I wanted, you know, whatever would benefit the scene. But changing your color schemes around um, can really change the spirit of um, your end result and what you're depicting, you know, within your scene. And we've seen it here on, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six so far, right? And here's seventh. I mean, this is, this scene right here is kind of a combination of, you know, kind of this one right here in terms of the sky and somewhat like this down here, but I've just kind of, instead of applying the inks kind of in a vertical format here, it's more like this. So you can kind of see this glow right here. There's that glow right there. And it's just kind of um, retained within the space here of the, uh, I don't know, whatever the meadow, I guess you could say. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I wanted to, here's this little thing with little streaks of pink up here. That would kind of be nice up there, you know, just for a little bit of variation up there. And I might do that when I uh, kind of finish all my scenes out, but again, here's the color scheme right here, you know, from the blues and greens like that to the blues and greens. So, you know, the, the techniques are all, you know, really quite similar, at least in terms of all these cards, the techniques is exactly the same. Changing the color schemes around, isolating your color um, areas to certain areas, and again, you can get a lot more mileage out of your stamps by uh, kind of just changing how you use them. And uh, we haven't even changed the medium yet, so once we change the medium, you know, and paper from glossy to more of a matte, I mean, we should get all kinds of different looks that way too. Some will be, you know, quite, you know, big changes and some of them will be more, more subtle. You can do the same type of effect here on matte paper as well. It looks a little different. It's, of course, it's not shining like this one, but, and the papers are a little bit more observant, but anyway, you just kind of play around with it and have some fun. All right. Looking forward to, uh, I'm really loving this series now, but um, I'm really loving, you know, looking forward to uh, playing around with some different media on this, uh, in this composition now. And I want to finish these off. I want to add a little gel pen highlights and things like that and 
go around here with some uh, alcohol pens. Maybe I'll add some, maybe I'll do a scene with alcohol pens next and I'll finish some of these off with some additional alcohol pen um, touches in here while I'm using those pens. All right, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for tuning into the channel. If you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section or drop us an email. A lot of information on stampscapes.com in the information section as well.